maker space. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I would have forgotten that. Welcome. Today is our Quizlet training. So if you weren't with us last time, we did the Jamboard training and all the makers have been busy making Jamboards. Today we are going to wrap up Jamboard and get into Quizlet. So we're very excited. I am Rachel Riggs. I'm a digital learning specialist for the EdTech Center at World Education. And I am Jeff Gumis. I am the digital learning senior technical advisor at World Education and work with Rachel a lot on fun stuff like this. Okay, so for today, we are going to pump the jams. <laughs> In other words, we are going to debrief. Oh yeah, sorry, Pope. <laughs> We're gonna debrief from our Jamboard session that we did, kind of talk about our observations. We also are very excited that some of you might share some of the Jamboards you created, not for the project, just out of your new found enthusiasm for Jamboard. Um, we're gonna kind of walk through some, a check, a kind of how to check over your work that you did in Jamboard and some next steps for your Jamboard making. And then we will launch into Quizlet and talk all about Quizlet and what the activities we'll be creating for this project for the Staying Healthy curriculum are in Quizlet. And today you will learn a lot. I'm actually very excited for this session. Jeff is going to share some graphic design, instructional design tips that I think we all will, will be excited to learn from. And um, we'll talk about how to share Google Docs in different ways, how to create a Quizlet study set, obviously, and then how to find, save, and share Quizlet study sets. So hopefully you'll be feeling very comfortable with um, both Jamboard and Quizlet by the end of today's session. All right, let's pump the jam. Am I up? Sorry. No, that was your cue, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I was checking people off um, on the attendance tracker. Sorry about that, everyone. Teacher. Cool, okay. Um, yeah, you move, you move fast through that. Awesome, let me share my screen. Um, so, what we're gonna start with actually, um, so we noticed there were some, some eager beavers um, and we noticed some, some overlapping work. And so uh, in the spreadsheet, I'm actually just gonna um, go into it now. Uh, so I'm gonna share our resource tracker um, if you don't have, any, have it already open. So copy that and put it into the chat. Um, and just so you know, I saw someone say you haven't finished, uh, that's fine. Like your, your actual due date for these to be complete is March 18th. We, we need to have all of the resources ready for the Wakelet training, because what you'll be doing when you leave that Wakelet training is going to be taking all the resources that, has, that have been created and putting them into that Wakelet. So we need to kind of have the work done and the links finalized so that all of those resources get compiled in that Wakelet. So what you will see, it's the last tab. I added it at the end so as not to confuse people, but I can actually move it over to the front now since you're all here. You'll see there's an all jams um, tab. And just as a little quick uh, Google Sheets tip, when you have spreadsheets like this that have a ton of different tabs, we've created links in here so that you can hop to them, but there's also this little menu um, over here on the left-hand side of a Google Sheet. And when you click on it, you can easily go to whichever tab in the spreadsheet you want. So it's a nice little menu for being able to do that. But in the All Jams tab, we just wanted to get a view of everything in one place instead of everyone in little chapter specific things. So if you could take a moment right now to go to your chapter um, as I did here, and I'll model for you, we're chapter five chronic diseases, Rachel and I. So I'm gonna go to chapter five and I'm gonna copy my link to my, um, my vocabulary builder activity. So here it is. And another thing with Google Sheets, when you hover over a link like this, it gives you the ability to launch that link, but it also gives you this little copy um, link here. So I can just hover over and click on that and it's gonna copy that link for me 
it's not, I'm not zooming out the way I wanted to, sorry. There we go. Um, so I've copied that link for the vocabulary builder. And now I'm gonna go back to all jams and I'm gonna paste it in here. So if we can take a minute for you to go to your tabs, copy your, uh, your links, it's okay if it's not done, but we just wanna have them all in one place because this is gonna be easier for everyone to review when we get to that point. Faye, um, I'll take care of chapter one for you <laughs> since you've done nine <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll pull those in. The other thing I want to make note of is we do have a handful of folks that have not signed up for a Jamboard. Um, and you will see that those folks are listed as, or those, though they are not listed, but we have these holds. There's, there's four Jamboards that have not been claimed yet. Please do not claim them. Um, we are going to find people who are continuing with the project, who are continuing to participate, but just maybe haven't signed up. Um, and double checking to see if they want those. So it could be that at some point in time, uh, we will send out something through the classroom saying, hey, we've got four more that need to be completed. If anyone wants to dive in and do that, um, please feel free to do so. So let me add the two more um, from chapter one, and then I'm gonna get back into presenting. So here's that. And this is just some fun because we can, um, we can uh, have the ability to see everyone's great work uh, all in one place. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Copy, and then back to all jams. And this is going to be where you signal that you are done. Um, and that's something for us to talk about today. We're gonna to talk about what your next steps are to completion. Um, and one thing I wanna note as you're copying these over, um, and when we get back, uh, when we get to um, actually sharing, is we really wanna make sure you're setting your links to anyone can view. So we are in a shared environment, everyone has access, like at any moment, someone could delete work. <laughs> um, so that's kind of a risk we take when we run projects like this, but within that spreadsheet, all of your links, um, anyone can access them. We want it to be set as anyone can view. And if you remember, when you go to share uh, any Google document, uh, a, a doc, a sheet, a sh uh, slides, a Jamboard, there's the share button, the blue button in the top right, and then you get this kind of option. So you want to make sure this is set to anyone with the link, uh, is anyone on the internet with this link can view. And then you'll want to make sure the setting is view. And the reason for that is I've even noticed myself, I'll open up one of your jams and I get excited. I want to start dragging things. But once I drag things like that is dragging your actual original file. Um, so we want these to be view only so people can see them and then they can make a copy of it if they want to use it, which is the nature of the work that we're doing. We're creating resources that others can see and then make a copy of it. And one of the things that we'll be doing, um, this is a Google trick in general, um, but it's also a Jamboard trick, is we'll be creating what are called copy links. And so this is something that I learned only like a year and a half ago, because one of the tools that you may or may not use is Google Forms. And Google Forms are great, but when I share a form with you, it's like you're just doing the form. You're like, so we were creating quizzes with them and it was like, Okay, I want to share this with, say, Christine, but when I share it with her, all that I have the ability to do is she can, she can take the quiz, but she can't actually take it and make a copy of it. But Google has this trick with all of their uh, docs um, tools that if you change the tail end of the URL to copy, it allows what's called a forced copy. So I'm actually going to go into one of my Jamboards, um, or actually the Jamboard that we are using, unless I've somehow managed to, I guess I deleted it, sorry. Um, so I'll go to the Jamboard that we are all in and demonstrate this for you. So I see people are, are filling this out, this is awesome. But if we go to the URL here and I'll zoom, I can't zoom in on that. Um, you see that there's this full URL and it's got a whole string of you know weird digits and numbers. None of that really matters to us right now, but you'll see there's this viewer at the end. If I change that, if I share this link now, 
it will open this up as a Jamboard and you'll be able to view it and work in it. If I change that viewer to copy, whoops, I have the whole thing highlighted, sorry. If I change that viewer to copy and then highlight this and I paste it into the chat, um, when you click on that, it's actually gonna prompt you to make a copy of this Jamboard. Now, I don't um, want to do that because you might get confused um, with the Jamboards. Um, Neil, what are you saying you have no idea how to do? <laughs> what? You're typing no idea how to do that. No, I don't. You're unmuted, Neil, so if you want to just um, say it. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, answering Rachel, sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh right. Neil, I'm Neil, I'm gonna anything. I'm gonna private message you a link right to the the resource tracker. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's where I am. I'm in Jam Jamboard Reflections, and I see that my URL was not on the spreadsheet that you put up, and I had no idea how to find that oh, so to uh, do URL. That. So that Neil, you go. To I, I thought I put it in, but apparently you did. I didn't. You did, Neil. You did it in your chapter. So find your chapter. Um, and how do I, yeah, I don't know how to do that. These are the tabs at the bottom. Do you see the tabs? Um, okay. That so let me, you uh, let, me your, let me, okay. Rachel gave me a link. So you signed up for, and then one. Okay, one. this has tabs. Okay. Yeah, you were chapter five, staying healthy. So if you go to the first uh, tab, you can see there's a link here that's going to bring you there, or you can use this menu. And it what's that sandbox? Nope, chat. You're going to go to chapter five. So S H B S H B chapter five. Okay, obviously I thought you said the first link, and it was it's this next to the last link. Is that it? S H chapter five. Yep, that's you. That's what. Oh, S H B chapter five. Yep. And then you'll see your link. And then you'll go back to the all jams tab and um, add it in. Uh, okay, so I just right. copy that. Cool. Okay. And so, then I put it in something somewhere. Uh, the all jams tab. So at the bottom, it's towards the left, it's highlighted in yellow. This is supposed to be easy, right? Yep. If you're all, looking at my screen, I'm pointing to it. All jams tab. Where yep. is that? It's at oh, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's so many tabs. All right. All jams. right. That's. Did you right. see? Can you see my screen, Neil? Uh, I'm not looking at your screen right now. Right now, I'm looking at my screen. I just put okay. in my link, my URL. Okay. But on the very and, left hand side, there's a of the tabs. There's a little set of lines. If you click on that, that's a menu, and it allows you to jump to any tab um, within yeah. the. We covered that. I don't know if you joined. Where did you? Where did that pop up? It's on the very left hand side of the. Oh, okay. All right, I see it. So it's a repeat of what's on the bottom, but yeah, in, but you got you linear, can scroll linear like form. you can scroll like a menu, yeah. 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 Which was something that didn't exist a few months ago. That's something they added, um, which is nice because it avoids the confusion that we just had. All right. Okay. All right. So, Thanks for <laughs> helping to alleviate my stress. No worries. Um, all right, so on this slide, and actually, um, I'll put the slides in the chat as well. If you do have access, we'll obviously put these in the um, in the classroom as well. But here's a link to the slides, and on this slide, and I'll this will also be a resource that we put in. But there's a link to this great article with other tricks like this for Google. Um, so I'm just going to hop in that because I think this is is such an important um, set of skills for us. But you can, you can change that tail end of a URL so that it automatically generates a PDF. So say I have a Word document of resources and I don't want people to, I just wanna have a PDF that I don't have to recreate the PDF every time I make changes to the, the Google Doc. Um, if I just have, say on my website, a link that does that, it basically, it's not, I'm not gonna have to recreate PDFs each time. So all of these little cards um, this is how you can create a preview link of a document so that someone gets a preview of something as opposed to an editable version. Um, this is the copy trick that I just showed you. 
In most of the other Google tools, it's changes from edit to copy. Um, this is, you can make a copy with comments link. Um, you can actually auto-generate templates so that people get a template that they can see the template and then use the template and make a copy of the template. So there's all sorts of really great tricks for Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, um, and Jamboard that are listed in this article. So part of this process is for us to learn some of these um, tips that make our life easier. So I just wanted to make sure you realize that about Jamboard. All right, Rachel, I think it's up. you're up now. Yay. Um, okay, well, I just wanna jump into the Jamboard. and check out what we got. Okay, um, Jeff, can you drop the link to the Jamboard again in the chat box? And let's kind of look at some of our reflections, things we like about Jamboard collaboration without the risk of others locking different features. Love the dialogue on Scramble. Oh, good. Biggest challenge is I often forget to choose the correct sharing settings, yes. I mean, that is an ongoing challenge that I have, and I've been using Jamboard and all of these Google tools for a while. Um, and you know what? Sometimes that's just where that patience comes in and a, and a trusty, nice, gracious person who says, I don't have access to that. <laughs> um, okay, questions I still have. Where is the QRL? I'm not sure what that is referring to. Are we adding a cover slash title page to any of the jams? Okay, good questions. Go ahead, Jeff, you look like you're about to say something. I think someone just might have heard me. Uh, I think it's not QRL, I said the URL. Um, the URL is the you know address bar and that's where like, if you can see on Rachel's screen, there's this slash viewer question mark F equals zero, like that's what you would switch to change. Yes, that's the URL. So it's in your, your address bar at the top of your browser is where you'll find a URL. Okay, um, and then learning the new jargon. Good, okay, well that comes, that will come. All right, so I wanna go, um, sorry, okay. I'm gonna go to the second frame, if you'll go with me. And I would love to hear how you guys think you might use Jamboard. And I've seen that a lot of you kind of offline have already started using Jamboard for other things. So let's go ahead, please put your ideas on this Jamboard so we can all see what you've been doing. We've got someone here already used it for strategic planning with my team yesterday. Seven of us had our own pages. Okay, there's a terminology thing, frames in Jamboard, right? Seven of us had our own pages to put thoughts, then one page to combine. Awesome, okay, so it's like you kind of each had your own worksheet and then you could put all those thoughts together on another frame. Very cool idea for collaboration and brainstorming. Anyone else? So I'm on the second frame. If you remember, we go up to the middle, click the arrow to get over to the second frame. I want to hear more ideas in this. I'm not going to move on until there are more. <laughs> Elaine, I see you. I see you thinking, thinking, thinking. <laughs> no, I would love to use with some of my beginners. I teach, uh, I volunteer for Literacy Minnesota. Um, but I just don't know. It's so hard because they sit there and they cannot interact with the right, the computer or the screen. So I would love to try, but I'm so scared because they, you know, they often ask their kids for help. So how can I make this? Um, how can I try? I'm not physically there. Okay. So, I mean, a good place to start, right, is there's the link so you can two things, right? When we're working with beginners, I find it's really difficult to get them into the links during like a Zoom class. So I would recommend sending out a link after class. I would love to share with you if you're Literacy Minnesota. Um, we did these whole pre-beginner and beginner um, supplemental Jamboard activities for Literacy Minnesota's ESL story banks. So this would be a great place to start because it's already made for you and you can kind of use these stories and um, and the Jamboard activities are made for you. So I would start with this, send them, you know, go through some of these stories if it aligns with what you're teaching, obviously, but 
Um, and then make I just teach a conversation class for beginners, uh, but they have a new curriculum, right? They, they came up with their own curriculum now. So, but this is great. Yeah. Yeah. And this could be just a model too of, yeah. of something to do, but these here are Jamboard activities with, you know, sentence builders and phonics practice, and they're just drag and drop. So they're like really, really good for, for that beginner level to kind of start feeling more comfortable with them. So like I said, wait till after class, send them some of these and kind of get them warmed up. I'll put the link to this in the chat. Um, this is what the sentence builder looks like. So you can see it's, there's pre-beginner and beginner. Um, let me actually, I'll put the links in classroom after this because I don't want to, I want to find the beginner link as well. Okay, sorry, I got off on a tangent. Um, all right, so, oh good, but we have more ideas here. Morning check-ins, great. Sounds like an ed tech routine to me where you're building in Jamboard and something reliable, great. Word sorts, picture talks. Okay, cool. What is, what is a word sort? Somebody tell me. Vocabulary building. Yeah, go ahead. Go Hi, ahead. Rachel. It's me, Evelyn. That would just be a lot of times just uh, previewing vocabulary uh, with their students for whatever oh. unit we're working on. I use it for that. I also use it with the money. Okay. And you teach, cool. I teach a beginner ESL class too. So a lot of it is uh, a lot of pictures, <laughs> as you yeah. know. And I love it. I'm mm -hmm. going to call, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, because you're one of the reasons that we we decided to create a template for the vocabulary builder. Um, so just so the, the folks on the on in this group know, like this is part of this process is, is we had run like what was called a design slam, and one of the teachers submitted this vocabulary builder, which is one of the tools that you did. And we did a training last summer to show how you could take that to create a digital skills vocabulary activity with it. And Evelyn, I don't even think you were at that live session, but you watched the recording and literally that night created a copy of it and made something for something you were teaching the next day. So have you used that with students? I have used that with students. Absolutely. It was so easy just to take what was there and, and pick my own vocabulary words. It was user friendly. I did the same thing with the vocabulary dialogue that you guys created for this session. And I did, uh, I used it with my low beginners for conversation practice. So oh. yeah, I love it. It's awesome. That's great. That's great. And someone said it's a safe place for grammar, which I, I really agree. I like, I've seen teachers use like spreadsheets and stuff for grammar. Um, and I like the idea of a free and open space where we don't feel so uh, kind of pigeonholed into making the correct word. And uh, um Spreadsheets are fine. I know Jeff loves a good spreadsheet. So <laughs> not dissing spreadsheets. All right, cool. Let's go to frame three, you guys. I really would love if some of you would put um, your names here if you are open to sharing some of your Jamboard activities. Go ahead, Jeff. I can see you're saying something. Yeah, I saw that there's a link in here. So just this is adding your name, not the link. This is a this is one of my only things I dislike about Jamboard is you can't create hyperlinks. Um, so whereas like any other space, when we sh like paste a URL that generates a link that you can click on, that is not something in Jamboard. And maybe by design, I don't, I don't know. There might be a reason behind that. But um, yeah, if you want to share, please add your name. So whoever had that green sticky note. But we do want to look at different examples. Um, and this is just to point out like, what these should look like, because these are the models that we are going to be using um, to, and you have a view of everyone's. So as you're double checking your work, you can look at all of the ones that people have created just to see you know, what these should be looking like. Um, this is a collaborative co-creation space um, for us to work. Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. So okay. many great, I, uh, Jamboard, so please don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a volunteer already, Elaine and Neil. Okay, um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something, but I forgot it. Oh yes, I actually got a, I got a message from somebody this week who we trained in a different project, and he he sent me his Jamboard with a big click here sticky note, and he said, 
I'm sure you can help me add a link to this. And I'm like, oh, well, no, I can't. <laughs> I wish I could. Um, okay, great. Let's let's hand it over to Neil. Neil, you want to show your See, Think, Wonder? Would love to see it. Okay, so how do I do that? So pull it up and then share your screen. So do you see where it says share screen? Let me make sure it's turned on for everyone. Yeah, I, everybody should be able to share. So... Uh... But how do I do that now? Okay, while you get it pulled up, I'm gonna have Elaine go ahead and share hers um, real quick. Okay. Okay, what? Well, Elaine's just popped up. Okay, yes, is that, is is that a good link? Looking good. Where are we now? I'm lost. I'm Sorry, lost. Elaine, Elaine is presenting right now. We just, if you yes. can, your Jamboard is open. So uh, one thing I had, um, one thing I noticed is that on the glossary, there is only label. And I really didn't like that because label could be label of anything, right? So mm -hmm. I said, and then in the book says warning label, but the glossary says label. Okay. So I put warning label. Um, okay not just label. Uh, I think that's silly. <laughs> There's so many labels, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then here, this took me a long time. So what I actually did, and I'll tell you guys what I did. Um, I created, uh, let me see. So what I did was I created something like this so I could align, right? Oh, <laughs> I am very, I am very. <laughs> I like things to be like, I have a little, you know, uh, anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've never even thought of that. Okay, you so you, stuck, you, you created a text box and you just like- So I did this, yes. And then uh -huh. I just, I, how can I turn this? So, um, no, yes. And then I align here so I could align everything because I like things aligned. Mm -hmm. And if it's not aligned, I have a hard time with. So I created, yes, not a text oh. box. I'm a sorry. Square, I a square, a square. Oh, yeah. Okay, shape. Yeah, so shape. I did okay, okay. this like okay. this. Look. Look at this. Look at this. I could <laughs> reach through and just hug you right now. Thank you. Look at how amazing <laughs> this yeah. is. Yeah, because it's so right. hard in Jamboard to get things to line up. It's it's really yes. tough. So, so that's one. what I did. There was my Great. trick. Okay. Thanks for sharing. So that's it. Yeah. And then awesome. this one. And here, what I found is that if you copy from here, when you paste here, it pastes exactly at the same spot. Okay, cool. Oh. So you don't have to be messing with it. Mm -hmm. So you had to do one by one with the words. I did, and I didn't know how to, do. yeah, you but can't. if you copy here, and then what I do is I copy here, I go here, right? I choose this, I do paste, and it goes right here. Yep. <laughs> because my problem is that I, I try to measure everything. <laughs> We, we're seeing we're seeing a trend here, Elaine, <laughs> and we love it. We're living for this amazing good. alignment. Yeah. So that's my trick, yeah, to make it. those Fantastic. and to look good. Yes. Cool. And we're gonna good we're tip. gonna show a little trick on how how to actually move things around so that they they line up nicely. Oh, please. Um, yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, this, wow, thanks for the, thanks for leading off with that because <laughs> that's like my big thing. One thing to note um, on these, and I, I, I noticed um, on, we, you absolutely did what we showed you how to do. Uh, this is across the board where we were showing you how to create the background, save it as a, or create the frame, save it as an image, and then make that the background. Um, but we noticed on some of the, like the vocabulary builders, like there were type might be a typo in the definition. So it's really important to try to keep your original work um, in there so that as you're we're reviewing, if, if there is an error, we can just fix it and you don't have to recreate everything. Um, if you're past that point, we will absolutely work with you to, to help um, to help do the redos because that's our fault. Um, but please just you can leave your original editable things in there. Um, and then when we review, we can remove the the um the ones that are editable so it's just the the back 
backgrounds remain, but um, great. Uh, Neil, do you want to share now? Did Neil disappear? He disappeared, actually. I'm going to email him and see. I hope he didn't click the wrong. Yeah, Bibiana, you want to go? Yay. All right, so what's I your tried, I know I know that I um, get some pictures that I don't allow to put it there. I learned that. <laughs> Next time I be careful with that. But I was trying to do different ones and find. This is like pictures using the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. because uh, my classes are beginners and they go more with pictures and that's because I like how to, you know, learn how to put pictures, pictures, pictures in order to work with vocabulary. Yeah, I love it. And Viviana, it seems like you added, like even these shapes, I don't know how you added these shapes. Are You, you must be feeling pretty comfortable with all of the different I elements. I, I really like it. <laughs> I love good. it. Good. This is great. great. This is really good. The so only problem that I found now is some students do not, you know, they don't, they're not afraid to go in and, and use it because they don't know how to. And some of them don't just have the cell phones and it's very yeah. difficult. But um, yeah, I really love it. It's good. good yeah. And I would say, like, just really. Um, chunk it you know chunk it if it's the first time just have them dragging objects across and not adding anything and then you know the second time maybe they can um you know add a sticky note but just kind of pace it out and don't feel like you need to have them doing everything with it right away right not like we have <laughs> not like we have taught you guys <laughs> do what we um, say not what we do <laughs> <laughs> yeah um okay that's awesome thanks for sharing viviana Thank uh, you. Faye. Faye, you want to share? We can't hear you very well, Faye. Sorry. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're better. Better? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Jeff pointed out that when you're looking at the jam boards on a cell phone, you lose the top, part of the top. And um, so my sideways thumb on the jam board on the cell phone is that there are fewer things that the students can do once they figure out how to do anything. Like you can't put a text box in, but you can um, write a sticky note. And um, that my that was my question. I don't know if, if it's not a URL and it's not a QRL. That Jeff had showed me in one of the in that uh, office hours session a a button to push to get the scannable things. So QR, that, QR code, yes. All right, well, it was QR got right, so. You got it right, yes. But I could never find it again. So that was the question behind that. Oh, okay, well, let's, um, oh, Jeff, Jeff, are you entering the waiting room? Okay. Yeah, I'm entering with my phone. Okay, you're gonna share on your phone, perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. And so what I had shown Faye is if I, um, in Google product or in Google, in Google Chrome, um, when you are in the URL, so I, now I see the, like there's lots of, yeah, sounds that are the same here. So this is the address bar. And at the right of your address bar, there's a uh, share link. This is for any website. I do this all the time. I'm working on my computer. I see a site that I wanna send to somebody and the way that I, communicate with that person is typically by phone, by text. I have friends that I don't even have their emails. Like I only have their phone numbers. And so what I will do is click on this and uh, that's a share icon. So you can copy the link, you can do a bunch of different things. You can actually share the link to different social media sites, but there's this QR code um, option as well. You also that also happens on, on many web pages when you just right click in the space, it gives you that option. But then it generates this QR code, and it's got a cute little dinosaur in the middle of it, which is also great. I got to move my, um, I have to move my window here for a second. 
So you once you scan that, um, you uh, you can scan that on your phone. So I'm actually going to do that right now. I am going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to stop sharing on this computer. And I am going to start sharing on my phone. So just bear with me for a second here. All right, so now it's warning me that I'm starting my broadcast here on my phone. Three, two, one, sorry. Okay. So now you should uh, see, can you see my phone? Like yes. moving, okay. Um, so I don't know why it's, um, I've got to do this, I guess. Yeah, so now I'm gonna to go to my camera and can you see me scanning the code now? Yes. All right, so I'm clicking on Jamboard. So I'm a student now, right, scanning. And now I have the app. Um, and what Faye's referring to is on the app, you can see up top, there's the navigation, right? So that's how I do my left and my right. And this is what it looks like. Um, and this is fine, but everything's super tiny when I'm in this mode, right? I'm in the vertical mode. So I'm gonna switch over to horizontal mode. And now what I see is like with this very Jamboard that we're looking at, so this is bad, actually bad design on my part in creating these, but I also know that most all of you are on desktops, right? So this is not an issue. But if this were students, um, this would be challenging because that navigation is now blocking the prompt at the top. So on the vocabulary builder, that's why the directions are in the bottom, because you can see on the bottom, uh, there's nothing blocking it. So now if I want to edit a Jamboard as a student, you can see there's a little, the sort of universal icon for writing or editing is a little pencil, right? And remember, we just, Rachel corrected somebody, they said a page and use frame. Um, we, we did very intentional modeling in the first session on terminology. So this is an edit icon. And I always point out like this, this icon you're gonna see in other places. And what it means is if I click on it, I have the ability to edit. So now that I've done that, I you can see that my toolbars show up on the left. And so Faye, you actually can, um, you can um, on the mobile device add text box. So just like same toolbar, um, as you have, but it's truncated because I'm on a mobile device. So I have the pen icon selected right now. So if I do something like that, um, it's going to draw on the frame that I'm looking at. And I, you can see I have an undo button, so I'm going to undo that. Um, or I could draw it and then I could use the eraser tool and erase that, um, like I just did there. The arrow tool is, again, it looks a little different than the arrow tool on a desktop, but that's how I select and drag things. And then I have that laser tool, but Faye, to your question, this plus sign um, is how I could add a, oh, you, you are absolutely, wow, thank you, Faye. I just learned something new. I thought it had all of the tools available. Nope. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's a little different for students on a mobile device because the sticky note is there, but um, the other option that we have is an image and there isn't the same image icon. They have two different, um, ways of doing that. One is through their image library, um, or the image library, and one uh, which is through, I don't know what's happening. Oh, sorry, I must have clicked something. Don't allow, sorry about that. Um, but so they do have the ability to add sticky notes. So really good point, Faye, and thank you. For, I did not know that. Um, but on their device, they can, they can do this and add sticky notes. Um, but it does appear, thank you, that they don't have the ability to um, add text boxes as they can on a desktop. Now, another thing, just because a screen is small, right? Um, just like any other zooming um, on, a, on a device that's a touch screen, you can pinch and zoom in and zoom out to see everything and to move everything around. Um, so that's um, how they operate it. So it is a little different. You can see me struggling right now um, on a mobile device. Um, so it takes some getting used to, but it does have most of the same features. I'm really glad you pointed that out, Faye, thank you. And I think that's like so helpful what you just did, Jeff, especially for some people saying that they're working you know, with, with beginners to give them that visual of how it's looking at your phone. So I think we could add some 
material to Google Classroom that shows how to share your phone screen via Zoom. That might be helpful. Yeah, Bibiana's giving me a, a nod. Okay, good. Okay, good. We'll add that. Um, great. Okay, well, does is there anyone else who wants to show and tell before we move on? Um, Faye, I'm gonna call you out because you've done some really cool activities and I want I'm hoping you could you could share like the the one with the big, bigger, tall, taller, and just explain why you went about um, creating those because I think it was just so um you I just have to find it. <laughs> took it and ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> um if you go to your Jamboard screen, there we go. Just um, yeah. Here we go. Here you go. Um, let's see. How do you get around? Okay, here we go. Again, very beginning. Big red ball, bigger red ball, and biggest red ball, and then some instructions and. Um, the majority of well, all of my students right now are Hispanic. So at the beginning, trying to get them to start using it. So I don't want them to struggle with instructions, but I need to know what I'm telling them before I translate it with Google Translate. <laughs> so three big balls. And then, um, okay, I worked on this some more because I changed it. <laughs> I added, um, after this page, I added an opportunity to take the vocabulary from the bottom, big, bigger, and biggest, or, you know, and, and slide them around to the, to the right ball. This isn't the most recent one. And then we did the smaller balls. And then just some statements to practice reading the whole sentences and then click and drag to make a sentence. The blue ball, this is, this is a red ball. Or my pictures. This, of, this is a cool activity. <laughs> so, and my pictures of you guys are down at the bottom and I can't see. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're smiling. Okay. The big, the blue ball is bigger than the red ball. Oh, I love this. This is great. And you got a smaller than, and so a bunch of phrases. And I, there was supposed to be, uh, this is the blue ball, and the red ball is smaller than. Hey, there's a question for you in the sure. chat. Um, Elaine is wondering, are you going to add instructions to each frame or are you going to keep the, like just the instructional frames that you have? Um, I have an instruction just preceding on the frame preceding because mm -hmm. I don't want to run out of space with a lot of instructions. Now I can't see my change slide. <laughs> That's a really good point um, that you, you bring up that you can, you can, mm -hmm. so here, that they're clicking through. Like, yeah. Yeah. Here, here are yeah. the instructions for the next page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and, great. Then, and there's the activity. Mm -hmm. And then uh, write, write your own sentences over here with, mm -hmm. with some sticky notes. Okay. So I have worked with okay. trees and numbers, and I learned that. Um, if you want to, if you have a picture of three trees and you want to number them, use sticky notes because it it was the best thing that worked. I don't know if I can find that. That's okay. Yeah, it kind of like stands out more. Yeah. Oh, this is so cool, Faye. Great. I really love that. Um, any questions for Faye? One thing I'm just kind of thinking as I'm looking at this is how much better this looks to me than seeing someone editing a Google slide, right? Like just watching this happen on my screen is a lot easier than someone who's in Google slides because you have so much extra stuff in there. So um, truly a much more functional digital whiteboard than Google slides. Okay, and Evelyn, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Faye, Evelyn says, this is a great activity. Thanks for sharing. You're 
Thank you. I hope you'll send us all the links so we can use it too. The copy link. <laughs> all right. Okay, you guys, I actually have to run. Um, I have another EdTech makerspace going on. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. I feel like I got the best part out of it though, seeing all of those, those cool things you guys created. Um, I'm gonna bid you adieu and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Rachel. All right, okay. awesome. Um, yeah, so I mean, this this again is the point of these uh, these makerspaces is not just the co-creation, but you know, seeing people actually take uh, these tools that you're learning how to use and figuring out ways to use them with your students. So really fantastic. And let's continue to share in the classroom um, and, and find opportunities to do that as well. So as uh, Elaine showed, um, one of the things that is really important is alignment um, and it makes things neat and easy for people to scan and easy for people to view. Um, one of the resources that is in your, um, your Google Classroom under participant resources is a full tutorial from uh, GCF Learn Free, which you may be familiar with. It's a really widely used tool for all sorts of digital skills, um, but they have a full tutorial on layout and composition, or on um, basic graphic design, one of which is layout and composition. And I really encourage you to look at it, you know, as we're, you know, we are being makers, right? And so more and more because of the use of educational technology, we're creating our own resources. And part of our responsibility in doing that is making sure that things are um, not too frantic or hard for students to read or scan, but they're clean and not overwhelming. Um, and that takes learning, right? We, 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 you know, we are now designers on top of being educators. And so these um, articles all have really great videos that walk through concepts of basic graphic design. The one that I would recommend is on layout and composition and Elaine gave us a great um, impromptu tutorial on that just a moment ago. Um, because of uh, the, the, her desire, her type anus, to make sure that things are really neatly aligned. And so this just walks through some of those concepts. Like here, you can clearly see this is not aligned. Is the world going to end? No. Um, if that's not, for, for some people, it will. <laughs> But that can literally be a distraction for people like me and Elaine that like makes it hard to focus. And so um, things like proximity and keeping things, you know, close together, the importance of having white space and not having everything filled um, is really important. And so this is just a nice, and this is exactly what Elaine showed, like having something that allows you to check to see that things are lining up and spacing. Um, uh, in, in a way that makes sense. And you'll see some tools like on your camera, on your phone. Um, I think most people's camera, phone cameras now, when you go to take a picture, it has a grid. There's a reason for that. It's, it's to help you as a photographer center your image. Um, like those are, those are tools that, 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 are, that are being built in now um, to certain things. So this is not mandatory, but as you're thinking about finalizing your Jamboards and saying they're done, you know, think about that experience for learners and making sure things are neatly aligned. Um, so this is that graphic I was going to talk about um, that I showed you on alignment. And I'm just going to show you a, a really quick trick. Um, so one of the things that's challenging with Jamboard is um, the fact that you can drag things and then you're like dragging, 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 drag. whoops, I need to double click it. Or you can click on it and use your arrow keys um, and it moves things, but it moves them in kind of jumps. So if I wanna say I wanna line this up um, to be flush here um, with the left, I can move around, I can do, I didn't mean to double click, I can like use the arrows, but I want to be like right up against there. And you can see that I can't in Jamboard because it does that, but you can. The trick is if you use your arrow key and the shift key, so if you hold down the shift key, and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. Oops, zoom. Why is this not selecting? I think my menu bar is in the way here. Zoom, there we go. So you see there's that space. So if I wanna line this up perfectly up top and below, um, I'm gonna grab my select tool. I'm gonna to click on this. And again, you can see the arrows sort of moving around in big chunks. If I hold down shift, it moves it in little tiny steps. 
So I can make sure, see there's a little white space still, now there's no more white space. Still not quite aligned up top, now it is. And now it's like, oh, there's still like white space. So I can shift uh, up and over. And now, I mean, I am, Elaine is like delighted. I can see her face, she's delighted at how like, so now it's like perfectly aligned. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm just showing for those of you who are like me <laughs> um, that if you hold down shift in the arrow, and this isn't like slides and other things too, it allows you to really nudge things. It's called a nudge instead of a move. Um, and it just moves it in those the tiniest increments so you can get things really nicely. So just some you know graphic design tips that we want to share with you. But these, these resources are in um, the classroom under your participant resources. Um, so in terms of finalizing your Jamboards, because we are going to move on to Quizlet, um, you have the, uh, the shared all jams sheet or tab, excuse me, that's in there. Um, and I think most of you have added your URLs. We've seen some examples of what these should look like. So go ahead and you know adjust your jams as needed. And on Monday, I'm sorry, I, I this week I, was, I have to hop to the next makerspace as well immediately following this. So I owe you a checklist. I'm going to provide you with an evaluation checklist on Monday. And that's gonna be something that you can look side by side at your jam boards and just make sure that you've, you've done everything according to um, the checklist. And when you're ready, and when you know that it's done, um, on that all jams, you're just gonna check off ready for review. And that's gonna let Rachel and me know that you're ready for us to take a look at it. And we'll work independently with you to give you feedback if needed, um, and or to say, perfect, great job, this is done. Um, the note that I said earlier still applies. Um, it's okay if in your Jamboard, I prefer that say for the vocabulary builder, you have that the one where they're adding images and it's a grid that you have the background where it's fixed and nothing can move. And then in the same jam, you also have the original text because that you created that frame with because that way, if there's a typo or if there's something erroneous, like we can fix it and just replace the, the background and you don't have to recreate that work. Um, if that becomes an issue, we, we are happy to help um, with that because that, that's an added step that we didn't even think of when we did the training last week. So are there any questions on finishing your jams? Um, go ahead and speak up or say it in the chat. Jeff, can you click multiple items and shift everything at the same, you can't, right? Oh, no, so it's, hard. It is, it, <laughs> it is a frustrating aspect of Jamboard. Um, okay. Everything, yeah, they're all individual um, items on the frame. All right. All right, so now we're gonna dive into Quizlet. Um, and just as you've seen, since you've been in the tracker, there's only one Quizlet that's going to be like required that we're going to put into our collections for each of the chapters. So this is going to be something that um, hopefully you, you can work with the other folks who are in your chapter. In some cases, I know there's Lone Rangers working a chapter. So uh, if you want to make the quiz look great, if you don't, don't, uh, that's fine. Um, but there's limited um, opportunities here for creating Quizlets because of just the limited number of chapters and the number of participants. So um, in the chat, I just want you to actually say, what do you know about Quizlet? Um, and the reason I ask that is because of all of the tools in your registration form, this was the one that uh, people had the most familiarity with um, in terms of having seen it and or dabbled with the tool. So I'm just wondering in the chat if you could share um, like, you know, what you know about Quizlet or how it's used with students. So I see some people use it often. Um, some people have used it once or twice. So I, so these are your responses. I'm asking the question of how do you use it? Okay, so flashcards, games, um, use it for vocabulary. Um, it can be used live. Um, and just that question for the person who said it can be used live, Christine, do you have Quizlet Plus or do you have the base uh, version? Uh, we have the free basic version. And you can still do Quizlet Live with it? Yep. 
Okay, that's good to know. I, I, I feel like they've changed some of the things that are in the free version, um, but awesome. I've, I've used it as a student to study. Um, so it's definitely great for flashcards and great point, Evelyn. So Evelyn uses Canvas with her students. Um, she's up here in Illinois, actually, and she's done some really great things with Canvas, but it is nice that if you use an LMS, you can embed Quizlet flashcards in it. So it's, it's not students jumping into something else. It's right within a lesson within a, a course module um, in there. So that's a, that's a great thing about the tool. All right. Great, so just a quick overview of what Quizlet is. Um, Quizlet is a, it's, it's a library of community-generated community study sets. And I think that's really important to note um, is one of the reasons I really love Quizlet is just it's, it's open. Um, you have to actually actively uh, restrict access to a Quizlet you've created. Like when you create a Quizlet, um, it is automatically going to actually just default, make it open to anybody. So it really is communicated, uh, uh, community generated. And that's the whole point is that why reinvent the wheel? I'm going to show you how to find a states and capitals Quizlet, right? Why would I want to create a states and capitals Quizlet if somebody else has already done it? And that's the beauty of a tool like Quizlet. It's also built for teachers and students to easily create, find, and share. So think about when you were a student and you had to study or learn vocabulary in those index cards that you would do, right? Or new terminology. This is a digital version of that. And I've met teachers who do actually teach their students how to create Quizlets themselves so that they can create them. And I had one teacher that was actually um, had their students, they gave them copies of the questions and answers on the citizenship test. And they had their students create study sets um, with those, uh, the, the questions and the answers so that it was students learning um, how to create tools that can help them study because it is a study tool. Um, no accounts are needed for students if they're accessing a quiz that you've shared. Um, if, if, you've create, if they want to create them, they do need to um, create an account, but with an account, if you have an account, then you have the ability to track um, what students are doing. So the basic tools within Quizlet are uh, these different study modes. Um, and so for any Quizlet that you create, um, all of these options are available to students so that they can work in a self-study mode. Um, as was mentioned, um, forget who said it, sorry, uh, there is a live mode that allows you to actually have students all working in a Quizlet together. It's a gamified version of Quizlets. Um, it's, it's player or live, excuse me. Um, and so it allows for, uh, oh, sorry, the play versions, excuse me. So there's two plays that students can do on their own. One is a matching activity. It's kind of like concentration. So they'll click on, um, they'll, they'll be the words and definitions and squares, and they click on the word and the definition to match and it clears from the board. Um, and then the other is gravity. And so gravity is a game where it's a typing game actually, where the word or the definition comes down and then they have to type the word and it, it's like an asteroid coming down to the earth and it'll blow up that asteroid. And so um, those are two gamified things for individual self-study, but live, um, you as a teacher, and I guess you can use it with Quizlet regular. So I, I wanna look into that a little more, um, but allows you to set up a class and the class can go into a gamified version of Quizlet. And then the reporting allows you to track learner mastery and learners can see their own mastery um, on their own. So one thing about Quizlet, and it's been a while since I've done a training on Quizlet. And since I did that, um, I've noticed there's a lot of ads um, and I get annoyed with that, but I understand free uh, is not easy to sustain. And so they need some sort of revenue generation. So just a note, if, you're, if students are in the app, um, it's a much cleaner experience. So I do, just like Jamboard, encourage you if you use Quizlet with students to have them download the app because in that way things open the app. Um, it doesn't eliminate the ads, but it certainly makes it a lot cleaner for them. Um, but I also recommend trying an ad blocker. So uh, the, the, the makerspace that Rachel and I are hopping off to is actually one where we're curating digital skills resources. And in the process of um, doing that project, one of the articles that we came across is an ad blocker that I had never heard of. It's called Adblock Plus. Um, here's the link to this article. It's 
that's also in these slides. Um, here we go. But I've uh, I've installed it on my um, Chrome, and it basically once you install AdBlocker, like this is what a Quizlet frame might look like before, and then once you have the AdBlocker installed, the ads go away, so it eliminates those ads. Um, there's a tool called Learning Chocolate that I'm going to point out uh, towards the end here that has tons of ads. It's a great resource, but the ads are just super annoying. Um, and so it's nice to add that in. One of the things you'll note about ad blockers, maybe you've added them before, is you will go to sites where um, it knows that you have an ad blocker and it will make a plea <laughs> um, to, to not have the ad blocker set up. Um, in particular, I've noticed that with news sites because obviously news, um, they really, as we, that they've been kind of the, the the one industry that we've seen from the get-go that that it, advertising is the only way that they're able to continue to you know sustain themselves, um, and so they sniff they sniff out when you have an ad blocker. So welcome to the internet, everybody. Um, but I I just as a as a person who is using this tool regularly, um, I do get frustrated with the ads, and so I turn the ad blocker on. Um, and so that article I shared um, shows you how to go about and doing that. Just want to make sure. Oh, Christine, thank you. If you sign up as a teacher, you can start a game of classic live, um, but su subscribe to Plus to have additional features. Uh, thanks for that point. Just like most tools, there's like a free and then for, it's like a freemium model where if you sign up, um, you get all, all of the features versus just some of the features. Um, and again, that's just another way that um, these types of free uh, platforms uh, make it so that they can remain free. So. When you're in Quizlet, and hopefully you've created a Quizlet account, I, I made the point to ask you to do that. If you have not, it's very easy, um, but you just, uh, just like any other website, create the account. Um, and if you don't want to, that's fine, because again, we only need a handful of folks to create Quizlet for the, Quizlets for this project, and um, it's not part of your participation or completion requirements. So just, just know that if this is just going to learn and learn about Quizlet, cool. Um, but uh, Along those lines, please only sign up for one. And just like with the Jamboards, if we find that there are open uh, Quizlets to be created that nobody's claimed, um, we'll double check with those who haven't claimed and then, and then open it up to if folks wanna do more than one, because it is a pretty easy tool to use. Um, so on your navigation bar within Quizlet, there's a create um, icon up top, and that's how you can create your own. There's also a, your library, and this is where anything you've created gets stored. It's also where uh, if I find that states and capitals Quizlet that someone else has created, I can add it to my library. So I'm not, I'm not making a copy of it for me to like modify. I'm just saying that one that say Christine created is perfect and it's just gonna go in my library and I'm gonna use it with my students. Um, They've added something called explanations. So this is again, part, part of a way that Quizlet's working to, I think, generate revenue where they've, they've done outreach with content providers like publishing partners. And so the exercises that might be in a middle school math book, um, they've provided the um, exercises in Quizlet and they have the explanations in there. And so that's something that is again, part of a, a more licensed version where people are paying for it, but those are in there. Um, we're really more worried about the study sets. That's what we're gonna be focusing on. And then both of these buttons on the Quizlet navigation bar take you to home. Um, they also have this search tool that allows you to, as I said, search for Quizlets that others have created. Um, and so I wanna go into Quizlet now. And if you have not created an account, um, hopefully, again, it's really quick to do so, um, but I want to try something out here and see um, if you want to play with me for a second and paste the link here. And actually, just show of hands if you can thumbs up on camera or thumbs up with reactions. Uh, add a thumbs up if you've, you do have a Quizlet account. Betas, Jordy, it doesn't sound like you do. I just shared the link to Quizlet, so you can go to Quizlet um, right now and do it. So it looks like most people do. Bibiana, 
Um, again, feel free to just watch along if this is like, <laughs> I'm looking to do this. Um, but creating an account is easy. Um, I can't really model that because I, I have the account. Um, but I'm just going to show you real quickly. I got to close my, um, there we go, my window here. So I'm at my home and this is, these are things that I've created or I've saved. Here's that state capitals one that I mentioned. But if I click on here, I can search for any topic that I want. So actually just because of time, we spent more time on Jamboard than I planned on, but that's okay. Um, I think it's important. Um, if someone wants to in the chat, uh, pop, pop in a topic that you teach with students that you might want a study set. Um, you might want to explore what's what's available out there with your students. Nutrition. How clever, because that's one of the topics that we're talking about in here. So if I go to nutrition and click here, um, what it's going to do is, is provide study sets. So textbooks. So these are the things that have explanations. Um, and again, you'd have to have the book. It's not giving you that textbook. Um, there's also courses that folks have created. Um, and then oddly enough, there's people who <laughs> they've made their username nutrition. So it's doing a search of everything in Quizlet. Um, I'm more, you know, worried or thinking or uh, wanting to look and explore the study sets that are there. So I can view all, and that's going to give me um, the ability to take a look at and preview different things that folks have created. Um, and, you know, some of these things, I don't know what this is. So this might be very specific to what they are doing with their students. Um, so it is, it can be a hunt um, for finding things, but maybe I could do something more specific, um, like my plate, um, which is the uh, Department of, um, or at the FDA is the Food and Drug Administration's, the new food pyramid. Um, is, is my plate. And so we can see different study sets that folks have created um, around my plate. So let's see, so vegetables, flip this card. So these are examples of vegetables. So this is something that might, you know, might be usable. So I don't have to start from scratch. So these are the basic uh, food groups and um, it's got different, um, different examples of those within. I can go back and I can filter my searches. So I could actually uh, look for things that are created by teacher users or verified creators or plus users. So maybe that's gonna give me more refined searches for people who really use Quizlet a lot. Or I can also look for ones that have images, right? So we, we are working with the SOL students. So maybe I wanna search for ones that have images and then I can see um, different versions of those. So let's take a look at this one. And so examples of dairy and um, milk cheese butter. So these are just images of where, how many sections are there on my plate five. Um, so as with anything that's like, people are just throwing things out there. Um, there's a lot of hunting and pecking and trying to find things that might be suitable for you. Um, but again, for something like states and capitals where we have 50 of them, um, I really appreciate that I can go onto Quizlet and find something um, that someone else has created. And you can see some have even created ones that are um, limited to certain regions of the country. And I can, I can you know, not reinvent the wheel. And so maybe I want that images, so I, there's a map that's associated with it. And again, some folks have already gone and, and done that. And in my home, I, like, I did this last night, I found one that's fantastic. And you'll see it's in my library here. It's not me, it's someone else created it, um, but it has a full set of the 50 states and capitals. Um, they're all correct. I verified that it's correct. Um, and they all have little maps that show the actual image. So that's just um, something, you know, I did not mean to close Quizlet um, that is available. I entered to register as a teacher and it says free trial for 30 days. Um, Bibiana, when you it is free. Um, if you signed up for, you should hopefully you didn't don't provide any information in terms of like credit cards. Um, you should just be able to create it. It's offering you a free trial, but the the website itself is free. Um, Quizlet is a free tool. Um, it's just it's it does like to very much promote 
um, upgrading to premium, which is frustrating to me. Um, but I also, I recognize the challenge of, of a free website, um, you know, being maintained. All right, so I was going to do a scavenger hunt with that search tool, but again, we spent more time on Jamboard, so I'm going to skip that, but I hope you get the, the picture that you can pretty much find study sets for anything you need. We, so just to, to actually make the point, we are creating Quizlets and there's a templated way that we are going to create those Quizlets. And the reason for that is so that when someone sees our Quizlets for staying healthy, they know exactly what it's going to, how it's gonna be formatted, right? There's going to be no curveballs. I'm not gonna to have to look and like I just did to see what's the quality. And that's kind of another point of the makerspace is we're working together to create the same type of activity so that for the nine or however many chapters, 11 chapters of staying healthy, um, everyone knows what they're getting. It's gonna be the same format um, with the same, um, the same look and feel and it eliminates the, the having to guess and look and see if it's verified. So that's kind of, that's the whole point of the makerspace. So um, apologize for flying through that, but uh, just, I wanna walk through some of the other tools within or other functions within Quizlet so you know what you can do with it. So in Quizlet, and I'll hop out in a second, but at the bottom of a Quizlet that you created, um, there is this little bar here. And you have the ability to add a, uh, something to your library. Um, so this would add something as is. So if it's something that like the states and capitals, I clicked on this plus bar and it added it to my library. I, I'm not modifying it, it's just perfect as is, and I'm going to use it. But I also have the ability to create a new study set. So that states and capitals, um, I could actually make a copy of it if I wanted to. And so then the original, I've made a copy of the original, and then I have the ability to adjust it as I see fit. So maybe, um, maybe I, I didn't want the, the maps, or maybe I noticed there were a couple errors, but overall it was good. I can make a copy and then fix the errors um, so that it's ready. Or maybe I wanted to add pronunciations. Um, so I could take that and then, you know, I just add, add those in. If I wanna share something, I click on the share icon, just like any other things. Um, and if I want more information about the set, I click on this. Um, and then there's this bar, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So I'm gonna actually just share a Quizlet. I'll share that states and capitals um, one with you. I just need to get out of here and go back to Quizlet. So this is um, a Quizlet, again, that somebody else created. And here's that little toolbar that I showed you. So I've already added this. So this would be actually managing it. You can create classes and folders within Quizlet so that you've organized the study sets. Um, and so again, if I wanted to customize it, I click on that and it's gonna make a copy that I can then, edit. I can't edit this version as is. But when I go to share it, you'll see that I have all sorts of options for sharing it. Um, I can email it directly to somebody so you'd get an email. Um, I could share it on Facebook or Twitter um, if that was something that I wanted to do. Um, or I can copy this link and paste it. So I'm gonna copy the link, there it is copied. And then in the chat, I'm gonna paste it. Faye, you are <laughs> spot on, I see your question. Um, I have no idea. How, I, I know how to remove the things that I've created from my library because you can go into the set and delete it, but I do not know how to eliminate this. I've added this lovely states and capitals things, um, but I have no ability to remove it from my library. If there's anyone on the call that has an answer to that question. The only thing I figured out is to make a, I don't want this stuff folder and put all those things in that folder. <laughs> so what Faye's referring to is say I say I uh, I don't if, want this on my if you, if you look at something, it goes into your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this is in my my library because I, I added it. Um, on a quiz that I've created, uh, there's a delete option. I can't delete this or remove it. 
um, which obviously I wouldn't want to delete it, delete it from Quizlet, but I'd want to remove it to my, from my library. So what Faye is saying is say I grab this and it's like, oh, I don't really like it. I can click on this and I could create a folder um, and call that folder, like as she just said, things I don't want. <laughs> um, and then create that folder. And so then it's gonna move it into this. And so it's, it's gonna be in its own little space. <laughs> Um, so when I go back home, um, it's not, it's, uh, it's still, well, these are recents, right? Um, yeah, this is one of the challenges of Quizlet. I'm not going to lie, that's a frustrating. Um, I'm thinking of this more from the things that we're able to provide our students' perspective, um, but I, I, that's a strange feature of Quizlet, um, no doubt. Um, all right, I want to move so that we have time. All right, so creating a Quizlet from scratch, um, I'm gonna actually, again, skip through this because it seems like we've got a lot of folks that, that already know how to use Quizlet and we'll offer some uh, open office hours for those who wanna walk through these steps together. Um, I wanna, again, be mindful of time so that we're getting to the next steps uh, between now and the next session. But I am gonna walk through um, how to create the Quizlets that you're creating. So if you want to create the Quizlets for your chapter, um, I wanna make sure we spend time on that. But one more thing to um, point out is, um, yeah, these are the additional features in that little pull down menu. And so you have the ability to print your Quizlets as PDFs. You can actually print them as flashcards so that it's like templated on a sheet so that if you could front and back print and then cut them out so there's physical flashcards that they could use. Um, you could combine sets. So say um, there were two different sets that some, something that, um, that I created or say I really liked the ones that that person that created the mid-Atlantic states and New England states and the Southeast states, but I actually wanted all 50 states, but I really like how they did each one of those. I could actually combine all of those um, into one and that becomes my own um, Quizlet. Um, you can export. So what that means is like your words and definitions could be exported as a spreadsheet. So it would be a column of words and a column of definitions um, or as plain text. And then you can embed as Evelyn shared, um, she will make a Quizlet and then embed it into her learning management system. So say she was um, using Staying Healthy and she had modules in her Canvas, um, she could have the PDF link so students could read. And then she could have another uh, page that has the Quizlet right in there. So all of their work is happening in Canvas and she's getting the reporting that they've actually um, gone to their Quizlet and, and worked in it. Um, and Jeff, the, the nice part about embedding it is there aren't any ads in Canvas. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it was a lot of the embeds so some of these things that have ads or even like YouTube videos where it's like, you know, it's got an ad at the start um, of a lot of videos if you're in YouTube. Oftentimes these tools like learning management systems, when you embed them, it doesn't have that ad at the start. It just goes to the video and then it doesn't automatically jump into something that you're like, why is this the next video I don't understand? But same thing with Quizlet. That's a good point. Thanks for letting us know that. All right, so I'm gonna stop the recording real quick because this is a, um, this will be a separate video um, for us, for anyone who wants to create uh, Quizlets for their, um, for their chapter. Um, this, this is like going to be the start.